My name is Trish Karn, and I started in desktop publishing because I had gotten very frustrated with the fact that I was working for Peggy Seeger, helping run her record company, and the inserts that we were getting back had many typos in them. I thought, I can do better than that. Then my aunt died, and I was left some money, which made it possible for me to look at buying a computer. The computer those in those days, which was about 1983, was much more expensive than now. It cost me about £3,000 to get a computer and get set up, not to count buying programs. Because I was starting a new business, I got in touch with the Business Enterprise Agency and they sent me on an enterprise course. It covered things like making a business plan, how you were going to advertise, how you were going to do bookkeeping, not to count how to run the computer programs that I was going to need. I had decided on an Apple Macintosh because when I tried the PC, I just couldn't keep track of how to get things saved where I wanted them to and to be able to find them again. PageMaker was the desktop publishing package that I had decided on. I went to the course on using PageMaker and despaired because it was on a PC and I thought, I'm never ever going to get anywhere with this. I've lost 3,000 pounds. And what am I going to say to the kids about having spent the money? I installed PageMaker with the help of my husband who was, was working with computers. After going on the PageMaker course and being utterly frustrated when I got the Macintosh, knew where I was putting things and able to find them again, I was absolutely over the moon. I thought, ah, the money isn't, but when, hasn't been wasted. I'd allowed myself in the business plan about a month to six weeks to get used to using the programs and learn the ins and outs and just plain practicing. The idea of playing with the programs and getting to use the computer was basically a good one. But the company that Roland, my husband, worked for was running a course that he and three other people were working on and they needed kind of a manual. This sounded straightforward enough and the stuff that Roland was working with was just words, so that was no problem. However, one of the other gentlemen was using lots and lots of equations in his work. And I was having to call Microsoft and say, okay, how do I set this mathematical formula in Word? They would go away and they would consult and then they would come back to me. So it was kind of groundbreaking stuff at that point. I managed to get the manual done and it seemed to be satisfactory and the guy who had the formula seemed to be happy with the formula. So first job done before I had even started business because at that point I was still supposed to be learning the programs. I advertised for dissertations or other typing to me and that brought some stuff. I answered an advertisement in the local paper for somebody to do desktop publishing for a company in the New Forest which did conference proceedings and other such work. This was unusual in that it was scientific and most of the people writing for it were not native English speakers. Roland had this scientific background that he was able to help me with some of the scientific terms and we put the work into English and the sample that we sent off got us the job. That was really rewarding because it was working as a team. I continued working for that group for a number of years this was all freelance, so I wasn't cutting in on either on different clients by doing work for others. This was a good thing for me because I really enjoyed being in charge of my time. It meant that I could be around when the children were home from school and needed supervision or could stop to make lunch or uh, snacks for them. If I worked eight hours in the day and four hours of it was in the morning and two hours was after lunch and another two hours in the evening, nobody minded except me. That was a real relief to not be stuck with, quote, normal office hours of nine to five. It also meant that the money I earned was mine. I wasn't paying a child minder to watch the children at the same time. I worked for a company called KMS, which sold products to beauty parlors. And the gentleman that I worked for there was extremely, extremely demanding. The gentleman was, um, a bit flamboyant, knew what he wanted exactly and expected it to be given to him yesterday, not to have to try and interpret what he was saying and then produce it. He was um, a bit know-it-all. 
he wanted time sheets and product sheets and lines and columns, and it wasn't possible to do them in Excel, which would have been my normal choice, because he wanted to have absolute control. It was a very demanding job, and I was not sorry when we moved away from Southampton and I could say to him, no, I'm not going to be able to work for you anymore. It was difficult to decide what to charge people because I had to clue what other people were charging. So I went to a couple of the local printers and asked them what they would charge if I gave them this kind of job and what the work would be. Then in return, having gotten the layout costs from them, I went back and used them for the printing work. So I don't think anybody felt used by me. I also tried to make it so that I was making what I felt was a reasonable amount per hour because I had to pay for the equipment as well as paying for my time. I'm much, much faster now than I was then. So I think people get a good deal for that, that cost. Having long-term contracts was a benefit because the work was guaranteed. I knew that at certain points, X would come to me, whether it was a conference that I knew was in the planning and I would get the work at a certain time, or whether it was two or three days a week for another company. When I worked for the publishing company doing educational material, I did two days a week for them. That meant I knew I had two days a week pay coming in. Some of the other contracts were more time limited, but were repeating. For instance, the one newsletter that I did, I knew that every two months I was going to have the newsletter to prepare. And I knew approximately what material I would need and what the cost to them would be. Also, I could judge what time it was going to take. Most of my work seemed to come from advertising and word of mouth. I advertised in the local paper. I let people know that I was doing it, and people who I'd done work for seemed to come back to me. I also kept an eye on advertising in the local paper for people to do this kind of work. So I was very fortunate because it was the very beginning of desktop publishing, and I was able to get what was a reasonable living from it. I have occasionally employed other people, mainly typists. At one point I had a young man as an intern for about three weeks who was at one of the local design colleges and wanted experience on PageMaker. I've also employed typists quite often when somebody's given me a manuscript. The desktop publishing systems require both printers, scanners, players, I've been very fortunate because my husband, Roland, is very good at computing and has been able to help maintain. I've learned a lot, and I've been fortunate that I have a son-in-law and a son who've both gone into computing and therefore are very handy when needed. I went down the route to being a sole trader rather than a limited company because limited companies have much more formal accounts. And they're usually done when there's a risk to the business in litigation or when you're doing payroll. I wasn't doing payroll because everybody I've hired for any jobs has been on a freelance basis. Uh, the typists are usually people who do typing for a living and therefore have many clients, not just me. For a while I was VAT registered, but most of the work I was doing was without VAT because it was books and newspapers. That work didn't attract VAT. So in the end, the owner's job of keeping track of everything for VAT and filing the forms just felt like more work than it was worth. And that saved me the VAT. The other reason was I didn't intend to really employ anybody and therefore didn't see the point in going into a limited company. It was unlikely anybody was going to sue me over a misprint on the type of work I was doing. And I was also very careful to try and not have misprints, although a few did creep in now and then. I've not really hit major problems with either suppliers or customers. I had one customer who never paid, and in that particular case I discovered that he'd taken BT and a number of other large companies for thousands, and he only owed me a couple of hundred, so there was no point in going to court over it because he wasn't worth much and everybody bigger than me would have gotten their take first. In starting the business, I wasn't particularly worried. My aunt and uncle had done a brass hook business for many years. My father had had a printing press in our basement for many years. I'd grown up around 
dad's printing and helping my mother proofread. My grandfather had run his own business, uh, which was a construction business. So working for myself didn't worry me in the least. I'd generally been fairly, fairly much of an entrepreneur from an early age. So starting a business just didn't worry me. The formality of the business plan was a bit more daunting, but it was something I could do, and so I did. And the bank approved of my business plan enough that they did loan me money in the beginning. So all in all, I've been very fortunate in the example set by my parents and my aunt and uncle. My family was fairly supportive. My husband was employed, but we wanted to send the, at least the two younger girls to private school. The older ones had gone, so they were already paid for in a sense. The kids were happy to have me around. My youngest had been unhappy about going to somebody else after school because she felt she was old enough to be at home on her own, but she wasn't. So when I stopped working in London and started being at home all the time, even though I was working, she was much happier. The kids also made pocket money by stu uh, stuffing envelopes for me for things from the school mathematics project. I was paid for their work. So they were earning money, not a huge amount, but enough that it was interesting to them. I trained as a librarian, and what I found really interesting about desktop publishing was that I was making books. And I liked making the pages attractive and easy to read. It was like a puzzle to put together the graphics with charts in the text so that it was easy to follow and easy to read. It, it's. I feel like I get paid to play. You can't ask more from a job. Than that.